Hey, what's going on, my friends? It's Dave Sharp. Welcome to Wake Up Legendary. And uh, you guessed it. That's right. We have yet another amazing guest here this morning. Uh, From Night Shifts to Precious Moments, a nurse's path to digital marketing and uh, staying home, right? Staying home with her kids. And uh, she has three kids, ages six, four, and two. Uh, Her main why for doing this is, well, my friends, you guessed this, more time with her family. Uh, She wanted life to slow down and be able to spend time with family and uh, not miss out on holidays and moments with them because she was so tired from working overnight shifts. Um, She's she's coming to us from uh, New York. And um, my friends, this is yet another, uh, you know, authentic, um, as real as it gets interview, just like we do all the time here on Legendary Marketer and Wake Up Legendary. Uh, this is as transparent and unscripted. I actually saw somebody say uh, because of yesterday's episode, either yesterday or the day before, they were like, wow, you can really tell this is unscripted. Every episode is unscripted. I do not even talk to the guests before we come on. And with that being said, let's bring her out. Emily, welcome to the show. Hi, it's so nice to be here. Nice uh, to well, talk with you. Well, it's so nice to have you. In, in, uh, is everything that I'm saying here in the intro accurate? Oh, yes. I mean, 100%. That was it. I was doing the 12-hour overnight shifts. My husband was working during the week. We were like passing ships, you know, um, and... Yeah, I was like, I we got to change something. I can't, I can't go on like this. It just was not working for us. Yeah, and I I read that off of your, you know, each guest that we invite to come on, we ask you to write a couple of sentences, answer a couple of questions, just so you know, I I can get to know you a little bit more um, before I talk to you and give you a proper introduction. Uh, but um, this is the first time we're talking and just to, for you to confirm that for everybody, just for those who may be you know, watching, wondering if this is somehow scripted or if you were somehow prepped or something backstage. No, not, not at all. This is, this is the first time I'm talking to you. Um, I watch and listen to Wake Up Legendary and mm. man, it's just, I wanted to get here and I'm just so excited to you know, be able to come on and talk. For sure. Wow. Well, thank you for watching. And of course, hopefully you're getting benefit out of, out of it as well. You're not just watching because you're a, a raving fan. You're, you're no, hopefully yeah. getting value. Oh, definitely. I mean, hearing other people that had been through it, giving their tips and, you know, how they found success has really kind of helped me over the past four and a half months on my journey. It, yeah. I tell anybody if, you know, if you're feeling stuck, if anything happens, definitely hop on, listen to the show. There's so much helpful tips that come out of this. And hopefully, you know, one of the things I try to focus on here is not just talking about how everything is all roses and we're all unicorns holding hands, running through a field of flowers, having nothing but success, going straight to the top. You know, everybody should be doing this because, you know, you can definitely succeed and you're definitely going to make a million dollars and you should definitely quit your job. Right. This is this is a journey. This is a this is a a business. It's probably going to be harder than your job. And and hopefully uh, for me anyways, I can only speak for myself. It's been worth it. Let's talk about for you. You've been doing this four months. What brought you here in the first place? Oh, I saw mom um, on Instagram talking about how she was only spending a couple hours a day being able to bring in some money for her family financially. And I honestly, I searched for over a year for a real way to make money online, Um, just kind of doing my own research. And I hadn't tried anything before. I never, you know, I didn't go through and do an MLM or drop shipping. I just had never tried anything. So for me, I was one of those people that watched for a while before jumping in. I was a skeptic. I did that research. And then I decided finally in June, I'm like, that's it. I need to change. Um, And I think jumping in and doing something you've never done is definitely scary. But like you said, it it was worth it. It is worth it. The journey, it's been a journey though, like you said, learning and getting better every day. Um, Coming from nursing, I had 
no tech background, no marketing background, no IT, like all of that was brand new to me. I posted a couple pictures of my family on Instagram before this. So people that are, you know, hesitant maybe to get going because of that, you can definitely do it. I, I find I, I was like a newbie. I felt like I was on ground zero when I started. Mm. Well, that's yeah. helpful to hear. So what, what sort of light bulbs went off for you as you transitioned from just watching some some advertisements out there, which is really what, whether you're, you know, um, running paid ads, whether you're posting free content, and I'm speaking from like the marketer standpoint, it's all a form of advertising. What, what light bulbs began to go off for you once you actually enrolled into our course, started going through the 15 day challenge? Of course, I, I believe you enrolled in our blueprints. You really yes. said, Hey, I want to dive all into this, but what initially what I mean, as a nurse, as a skeptic and probably a, a very logical, analytical person, you have to be in your profession. You can't just be whimsical and emotional because right. you have right. to be reading charts and keeping people alive and um, mm -hmm. all of that. My father spent 77 days in the hospital this year. Half, half, uh, luckily and thankfully, he's out. He had a big open right. heart surgery. But I saw what you do. And I yes. know that you are the best of what we in this country and probably this our every country has to offer. But I also know that you can't make decisions based on emotion. Um, so clearly you were dreaming. Clearly you were wanting. Clearly you were desiring more time at mm -hmm. home. But what other light bulbs went off for you as you began to go through the 15-day challenge? Oh, my gosh. So many. I honestly feel like it opened my mind up to ways – that you can make money. Um, my husband worked as a carpenter for years. We were very much kind of like that blue collar clock in, clock out, get paid type of thing. So just in the 15 day challenge, I read that um, Rich Dad, Poor Dad, and I was just like, we need to expand our streams of income. Um, that is the only way that we are going to find some time freedom. And that that's really what I was after. So I would say, just the mindset and the possibilities of making money online and how that's possible with a 15 day challenge opened my mind up to so much outside of a nine to five kind of clock in clock out type of deal. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so you obviously saw some of the, 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 the hurdles, the pitfalls, the, the, the need for support and, and community and more uh, clear and even advanced training. So what yeah. pushed you, tipped you over the edge to enroll in the blueprints and kind of go all in on your education and your, and your knowledge? Um, I just saw the value that was there. I was like, this is, this was kind of the answer I was looking for. And when I decide to do something a hundred percent, I'm all in. <laughs> I think, you know, when you go 99% into something, it leaves your mind open to be like, oh, maybe I'll quit. Maybe I, mm. you know, won't move forward. And I think that mindset of going 100% in, I'm going to figure out how to make this work. You don't waste any of that time and energy on maybe why it won't. So for me, I was like, I found what I was looking for. I'm going to go all in and I'm going to find a way to make this work. And yeah, that was kind of the driving force behind doing the 15 days and doing the blueprints for me. Nice. Nice. That makes a lot of sense. And you've had, um, you've had significant success. I mean, uh, you, you're, we're advertising or posting your, uh, Instagram channel handle right here on the screen, uh, yeah. little time affiliate, which is yeah. cute and, and, uh, <laughs> interesting. Um, and you've got 40,000 followers over on that, profile. Talk to us about what that journey has been like here in the last four months of building on average 10,000 followers per month. I, I know they probably didn't come all over an average spanned out. They probably, you had burst here and there, but what has yes. it been like for you to get on video and begin to build an audience of people who are listening to you for financial and marketing advice and whatever other types of content you're posting on there? What's that been like for you? Oh my God. It's been really humbling. I mean, I think you find out so much about yourself when you're putting yourself on camera every day. Um, it's something that was hard to do, uh, but something that I learned, you know, more about myself and more about other people and their struggles. And I think that's 
been the greatest part about this is connecting with people that had been in similar situations as me, like working long shifts, overnights, not feeling like they have time to connect with their husbands, their kids. I, I just know how it is with three kids. It's just busy. You're just always on to the next thing, on to the next thing. And just needing that extra time to take a breath and enjoy those moments. So yeah, I think the biggest part is connecting with people, hearing their stories and, you know, finding out either if it's through a side hustle or if it's through, you know, digital marketing, affiliate marketing, finding a way for them to create a little bit more income and, and more time. I feel like that's the most, um, the, the biggest struggle that I see people is we need extra income and more time because we're trading all of our time for money. <laughs> <laughs> you know that that dad gum those two things right there in the 13 years that i've been doing this <laughs> that has not changed yeah that has not changed i there has not been a dad gum time in 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 13 years to where I have interacted with my customers and my audience and, and hardly any of them, if a single one of them ever said, God, you know what? I got plenty of time and plenty of money. And I was just <laughs> randomly kind of on the internet and I came across your video, Dave, and I just thought, what the hell? I got so much time and so much money. I'm just going to check this out because... <laughs> I got yeah. nothing else better to do with my time and money because I've got so much of it. Never. Yeah. I've never. Mm -hmm. It's the exact opposite. A hundred percent of people. Yes. Even the skeptics, even the people who have not taken my course courses or watched my videos or followed or bought into the idea, mm -hmm. they still have the same complaint. They just have bigger skepticism Yes. And helps than they do belief in, in a, a, a tolerance for the risk that it takes to be an entrepreneur and to kind of, you know, because, you know, I don't have a lot of time. So I don't really want to risk my time to do something that I'm not really sure is going to work out. I, yes. I don't really believe in that. I also don't know that I believe in myself. And we're battling a whole lot of different internal beliefs, external factors, what were your limiting beliefs that you had to overcome in order to follow through? Oh my gosh. Um, honestly, pressing play on that first video, I had done the training. I like to learn. So that part, I was so interested. I was soaking it up. I was learning. I was excited. And then it went to press play on that first reel. And I was like, am I going to do this? <laughs> and I knew I was, but it was, it was getting past that point of being like, you know what, this is my life. This is my family's life. And that's really, that's what matters to me is building a future for them. And if this is what's going to get me there and I know it can, I'm going to do it. So I think it was breaking through those. What are people going to think of me that, you know, all of those things where you, you, you're holding yourself back. Those beliefs are, are totally yourself and not other people. I don't think people waste a minute thinking about what I'm doing on the internet. And if they do, I, it doesn't affect my day to day. <laughs> but, but we really do come in with that thought that everybody's waiting yes. on us to press play. Yes. Um, I, I love how you just said that I was rocking and rolling when I was learning and I was nice, safe in the classroom, yes. you know, my, my virtual classroom. And isn't that so true? All everybody watching and listening. I wonder if you, if you identify with that, if you'd leave a comment and just say, you know, heck yeah, hell yeah. Yes. Me that man, we get really fired up when we're watching videos, when we're scrolling, when we're, when we're getting ready to get ready. Mm -hmm. You know, because I mean, it's kind of like, whoo, I'm, I'm moving, I'm organizing, I'm getting business cards printed. I'm, you know, <laughs> and, and this is always how it is, right? It's yeah. sort of like we, we get ready behind the scenes, you know, we're setting things up. This is another reason why we spend so much time setting things up. It's not really, at least in my experience, it's not really that we're so overwhelmed with the tech, but we, we, no. we obsess about that because, that way we can avoid putting ourselves out there. Mm -hmm. 
And you're right. When the rubber gets time to meet that dad gum road, you know, we, we get these thoughts in our head, like maybe I should go back and check my funnel one more time. Yeah. <laughs> maybe I should go back and watch a couple of more videos just to make sure that I know what I'm doing. Right. Or it's mm -hmm. like, we create other distractions. Oh, let me, let me go help so-and-so with it. And then what we hear a lot of times is, well, life showed up. I got distracted. I'm just getting back into it. Did you really, <laughs> did you, did you really get distracted or did you purposefully allow yourself to get distracted because yes. you got to a crossroads of s sort of behind the scenes and now it was time to step out on stage mm -hmm. and you got nervous and Absolutely. you know what <laughs> that's completely normal yes it's not like it's a bad thing it's not like you're like a leper if you got nervous and got a little stage fright exactly well, that's exactly what i it sounds like you're talking about oh a hundred percent i think it's that do you procrastinate and put it off? Like you said, there's other things going on. There's always other things going on, but it's just taking that first step and being like, I'm going to take the first step. And I just love the saying that's like fail forward. And then you just, you take that next step and fail forward and take that next step and fail forward. And then before you know it, yeah, it's much easier to create content make reels, connect with people. But was it easy on day one? No. Was it easy on day 30? No. I, you know, you just, you just keep going forward. Yeah. Yeah. So Sherry says, I'm stuck at the tech part. And, and, and uh, we hear this, Sherry, we, we understand your pain, but I wonder how much it is truly being stuck at the tech part or how much it could be some of that procrastination that we're talking about. Not that you're purposefully trying to procrastinate, Right. But there's there's always a way around things. There's always uh, there's always it's not a matter of resources. If it's often a matter of resourcefulness. And not only do we show how to set things up step by step, but every single piece of software that you're using has their own customer support desk. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, we have customer support. Uh, we have Facebook communities. Uh, we have um, coaching sessions that you can buy, um, you know, at Legend. As a matter of fact, we advertise them right throughout the 15-day challenge at the end of the challenge, uh, I think days 7, 8, 9, 10, where we're, you know, you can go to legendarymarketer.com forward slash one-on-one, the number one-on-one. -on -one. Um, but, I mean, the blueprints obviously take you through step by step. My question really for all of you who are feeling like you're stuck somewhere is really this powerful point that Emily made here a moment ago, which is, are you really stuck by, because there's actually a, a roadblock in the middle of your path or are you creating roadblocks because you don't want to move forward and start to put yourself out there and actually hit post on those videos. Nobody knows. Nobody knows except you. And nobody, it's nobody's place to shame or to try to push you off that edge until you're ready to jump. But I do find that a lot of times, Emily, I don't know if you ever saw that video to where the the the, the kids like kind of like thinking that he's drowning and it's like, ah, I'm drowning. And then the parents like stand up. Yes. And <laughs> And then he stands yeah. up and he realizes he's only in one foot of water and he can actually kind of walk himself right out of the situation. Mm -hmm. So um, you mentioned that you were tech challenged as well, plus yeah. uh, hesitant to press post. Um, what what did you use? What did you do in these moments to either push yourself to reach out, to use the resources that were in front of you or internally motivate yourself to go ahead and follow through, even if you had to close your eyes when you were doing it? Yes. I, well, the tech part I watched, I think it was the system IO, but I, I watched one of those videos 10 seconds at a time and then I paused it. And then I, so for me, I was like, in my head, I'm like, I can figure this out. I'm not a tech person, but I can figure it out. I will, watch that video 10 times if I have to and figure it out. The other part with the pressing play, I do a lot of FaceTiming because my 
my sister and brother live out in California. My in-laws are from Canada. So I got into a mental space where I was like, I'm just FaceTiming people that I know, people that I'm familiar with, friends. Um, and that really helped me because, yeah, if you're not used to being on video, if you're not used to talking to the camera, it can feel really weird. So I think the mental space that I would get into is like, I'm calling my sister, I'm calling, you know, Gamma, I'm calling, you know, my brother or friends. And, and that's who I'm talking to, you know, I'm talking to another person where you can feel maybe disconnected to your audience or, you know, to a screen, but um, getting in that mental space of a familiar place really kind of helped me, I think, maybe connect with my audience because I, you know, showed up as I, as I was, you know, with the, this dirty house, this crazy household, um, and just, you know, be yourself and put yourself out there as, as authentically as you can, I think. Very powerful. I love the practicing on FaceTime and just doing the little kind of things that you can do in your normal, integrating those practices of being on camera, for example, by FaceTime. And instead of picking up the phone and just calling, that's, you know, such a such a small but big difference maker. I want to shout out a couple of our uh, a couple of our commenters here. Um, first and foremost, wow. Um Sherry, uh, you came back with just such courageous honesty. I want to just shout you out. She said, no, I am truly creating these darn roadblocks, but I am challenging myself to get this done before start of 2024. Awesome. I'm, I, hold on a second, Sherry. I need, to, I, need, I need to do something here. I need to do something here. I need to, I need to get, oh. <laughs> I need to get, every hat that's laying around right now for the triple boom the rick flair ddt drop the elbow on him that was the biggest baddest hat drop of all time that was for you sherry i just i put a bow into each one of those hats down on the floor um ludwing says or ludwing hopefully i'm not butchering that too bad i'm not a tech person but i will figure it out yeah. That's what I, that's, that's it, man. Um, you know, gosh, what, what, uh, what, what honesty I'm, I'm seeing, uh, here in, in, in the comments, Kelly said the tech part was my excuse for the limiting belief I was hiding from. Then I asked for help and so many people came forward and it motivated me to keep going. And sometimes that's really what it is. I think, I don't know about you, Emily, but I also um, can relate to having too much pride to ask for help. What has it been like for you to be new at something? Obviously in nursing, you kind of got to at least act like you know what you're doing. And I'm sure you do, but you don't want to walk into a patient's room and be like, well, let me just go, let me ask this. Uh, like, I, I don't really know. You know, you got to kind of know or at least act yes. as if you know, just because I know from being in the hospital with my dad this year, not only are you nurses the best of the best, but um, you're also so, you interact with, with patients and their families so much at putting them at ease and things of that nature. So doing something that you weren't, an expert at that you have been new at how have you you said it's humbling earlier in the interview yes. I mean, how have you humbled yourself and swallowed your pride to reach out and ask for help and 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 um be new at something and embrace that oh yeah i feel that so much i actually got on one of the hot seat calls which was <clears throat> so so helpful because i think a skill to develop is how do I get better? How do I improve? And it can be hard to maybe hear that you're not doing something right or, you know, there's something that you could do better at. And I really relate it to that first year. I was a nurse for over 10 years. So that first year of nursing is so hard. You do all that schooling, right? And then it's time to put that schooling into action. And you're like, I still have so much to learn. And I think being going through that first year after nursing school, I was like, I want to be the best I can be. And I really was like, I'm going to ask questions that I don't know the answer to. And I think that can be really hard sometimes. Um, but if you can do that, if you can really evaluate what you're doing, evaluate your content, and then take that and continue to grow with it, 
that I think that's the key to being successful is is like you said, humbling yourself, asking for help when you need help. And then when you get that help, actually take the advice and put it into action. Yeah. So what's what did you do for your first videos when you didn't? I can see that you're working in the affiliate space or the yeah. you know, online marketing space. And um, that's that's such a common niche for people that come in and are, are kind of passionate. You said you read, read Rich Dad, Poor Dad. You're realizing you don't have time and money freedom and you want more of that. And so you're kind of, that's something that you're passionate about. You can talk about that. So it kind of makes sense uh, about why you picked that as your niche. Is there anything else to add to that about making that decision? Oh, well, actually a nurse that I used to work with, um, she got me into reading these financial literacy books because I, I feel like that's a piece that's kind of missing in the school system, you know, and and nowadays we have so many resources available to us that there really is an excuse. If you want to learn about it, you can go out there and learn about it. So I had spent, um, you know, the past couple years kind of reading those books and I was so, so interested in it. So that's kind of what dove me into it. I was like, I know I can talk about this. I know that this is information that people um, can really benefit from and learn from because I know me, you know, I wish I had that information. I wish I had studied that in my early twenties and not my mid thirties, you know, um, and I want to set my kids up for, to have a sense of financial literacy and be able to make good decisions with money. And I think there's a lot of emotion that goes along with managing money and even earning money that I'm now finding. I think I learned a lot about the managing part and not any of the learning, you know, how to go out there and add additional streams of income, passive streams, you know, um, and getting into that course really kind of jump started that second part for me where I had that previous part of learning about the money management, but not about creating some of that income for myself and my family. Yeah. 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 And the principles that kind of go behind being successful at something like affiliate marketing or any sort of business that you're going to operate, which are a lot of the principles that we talk about on our coaching calls uh, here on Wake Up Legendary. Mm -hmm. you know, we try to talk about them as much as possible. You hear about them over and over, the consistency, you know, the focus, the boundaries yeah. that you need to set. So what, um, what, what have you tested? What did you, what kind of content did you, did you create at the beginning? What is different about the type of content that you're creating now? What have you learned? And how have you been consistent with it? What has allowed you to be consistent? Is it a certain type of content that you create? Is it a certain, um, is it a certain, um, uh, mindset that you have about content, meaning are you less of a perfectionist? Talk to us a little bit about your content creation journey over the past four months. Okay. I would say in the beginning, um, it was kind of like they said about the tech side of it. I was so hung up on how to make a reel and I, that I spent a lot of my time figuring that out. So I think, and I kept all my videos up. So if you want to scroll back and see what the beginning looked like, um, I didn't do a lot of talking. I think I was a little nervous to do that. Um, I was mainly focused on how do I set this up? How do I put words on here? How do I put a song on? You know, all of that tech part. And it really kind of evolved to talking more on camera. Um, and I think as I moved on, figuring out how to bring value um, to the to like the audience and the followers. Because I think that mindset of being able to serve first, you know, I think I heard this on another legendary and sell second is, is so true. You know, people want to be able to see that you can bring value um, and that you're continuing to add value, whether it's, you know, th through side hustles, through digital affiliate marketing, you know, through money management skills um, mm -hmm. that that is really how my content has evolved. And I think it just evolved as I got more comfortable getting on screen, more comfortable making reels. Um, and I think so many people see other people and want to jump in on their day 60 when they're on day zero. Um, mm -hmm. And it just kind of comes with with doing something over and over and getting those skills developed, getting more comfortable on camera. Um, I get a lot of people asking like, what direction should I go in with my content? Um, 
And I think it's different for everybody. You know, you've got to find what you're comfortable doing and kind of try to find that niche and the audience that you're speaking to. I think that would probably be the hardest part. And honestly, probably took me six to seven weeks to kind of figure that out in the beginning. Yeah. Well, what's the biggest takeaway of those six to seven weeks as, as, as you were kind of sifting and sorting through, you know, audience building and, and kind of developing your message? Keep going, <laughs> be consistent, show up, show up when you don't feel like showing up, show up when maybe you don't think you have the time and you need to stay up you know, I put the kids to bed and that's when I kind of get that work done, you know, set yourself up for the next day um, and have a plan. I think have a plan, be filming like B-roll in your, I think that's the biggest part is kind of finding little moments to get that content. So mm. you're prepared to, you know, put something out the next day. Um, like you said before, I think life picks up really quick. Life moves fast um, and just be really intentional with that. I, I think little time, that's where it came from, is that small little moments throughout your day, you can turn into income, significant income for your family. Just keep that consistency. Uh, I know I heard that all the time. I'm like that same thing over and over. Be consistent, keep learning, but it's true. It really is true. Yeah. Well, the principles that work the best are always the simplest and the most timeless. Yes. Ones. Yeah. I learned everything I needed to learn about you know, business building and affiliate marketing in my first couple of years, it's just been the hard thing is, and this is the same in, in recovery. I've been in long-term drug and alcohol recovery for 15 years. And there's a saying in that program that's probably more true than any, which is if you don't leave the basics, you never have to go back to them. And every single time somebody relapses, they always say the same thing. Well, I stopped going to meetings. I stopped calling people and being connected. And I stopped, you know, doing the little routines, praying in the morning, praying and, you know, help asking for help in the morning, saying thank you in the, in the in, in night before I go to bed, reading a little bit of literature, helping somebody else, helping somebody else stay clean that day. And the same is true in, in marketing. You know, you learn the basics the first year. You learn everything. It's kind of like you learn everything you need to know about life in fifth grade. I think there's a book or something <laughs> called that. And yeah. it's true. It's true. The problem with us is we're so complicated. We're such a complicated species. Our brain is so, you know, it's it's got, it's got it just creates and makes 6,000 thoughts per day just like a machine. Mm -hmm. And so there's so much room for overthinking. There's so much room for getting bored. There's mm -hmm. so, you know, and that's one of the biggest challenges with successful entrepreneurs is they get bored and they want to go reinventing things and they end up screwing up their business. Um, yeah. So a couple of other things that you, that you uh, hit on there, um, you know, just about, uh, creating content and, and audience building were, were really powerful. And, um, you know, I think that everybody can, um, can, can take some really valuable lessons away. For example, when you said, keep showing up, I asked you like, what's your number one takeaway, um, is keep showing up. Well, what, what came up for me when you said that was for me, I develop my message through actually talking it out. Mm -hmm. It doesn't come to me. Ideas in clarifying my message and who my audience is doesn't particularly come to me by sitting around thinking about it. Thinking, um, I mean, I do need, I do need carved out thinking time, mm -hmm. but the majority of us need to actually be talking things through. And as we talk them out, we get more clarity about what it is that we're trying to figure out. It's one of the reasons why talking to a therapist, talking to a friend, talking to your parent, mom, or whoever you talk to, your best friend, your husband, your wife, a lot of times we have a need almost always to process and talk things out. And as we talk them out, even if somebody's just listening and you ladies, I know you, I know you, you need this and appreciate this because I've heard this. <laughs> Honey, I don't need an answer. I just need you to listen. Well, yes. 
I believe the reason why that is is because, and it's actually true for men too, it's not just women, mm -hmm. is that it's really helpful just to talk it out. We oftentimes come to our own conclusions by just processing out loud our thoughts and feelings. Right. Mm -hmm. And the same is true in your marketing message. And the coolest thing is, and I actually saw this comment previously come through earlier in the episode was, you know, creating content has actually been therapeutic for me. Somebody said, well, yeah. guess what? There is therapeutic value to creating content, but you also get clarity because you're talking to something that can't talk back. So it's everything you've ever wanted, right? <laughs> It's, the damn, it, it's everything you've ever wanted. It's an actual reason to sit there and talk to a bunch of people who can't talk back. Yeah. They have to listen. Yeah. They actually can't talk back. But then the beautiful thing is you don't have to listen to their voices. You don't have to listen to a thousand voices at once. They will type in their feedback to you. So mm -hmm. they will actually tell you if they liked it, if they didn't like it. You know, what makes sense? What doesn't make sense? If a video starts to go viral and a lot of people are, you know, well, that must have really made sense to a lot of people. So it's yeah. really as scared as we are to hit post. And as much as we think it's going to be this big, you know, crazy, horrible thing that we're going to get hurt. And, you know, all of a sudden, you know, you know, I don't know, you know, stop breathing or, you know, start bleeding or, you know, I don't know. <laughs> Some of us, I think, catastrophize the hell out of things. Oh, Yeah. It actually is a beautiful process that not only gives you the opportunity, not the guarantee, but the opportunity to earn some income while you're learning, yes. but it also gives you the opportunity to be able to clarify the very thing that you may feel stuck on right now, which is what your message is, what your story is, and begin to test ideas in terms of what people are going to like and what's going to resonate with them and what's not going to resonate with them so much. Mm -hmm. And here's the good news. If, if it doesn't resonate with them so much, usually the, well, the worst thing they're going to do is write a mean comment and you can yeah. delete it and people are mean and welcome to the real world. But the majority of the people are just going to scroll on fricking by it and not say a damn thing. Oh, Exactly. And exactly. tomorrow they're not going to remember what the hell you posted anyways. Right. Because everybody's attention span is so short. Exactly. And so is this, does this, what's coming up for you as I'm ranting about this and oh. piggybacking on your thoughts a little bit here about, you know, what this opportunity to sort of, you know, again, not a guarantee, but an opportunity to sort of earn as we learn, but, but, clarify our message as we're posting and does the sounding board and the talking and, and having somebody listen, does that all make sense to you and resonate? And does that feel like it's yes. a good example in this situation? It's a perfect example. I'm like, that's, how, that's how you get better anyways, is you continue moving and learning with it. I mean, like you said, bad comments, there's worse things that happen in the world. And I think putting it into perspective for me is like, I could be in the hospital dealing with real emergencies, real. So all of this I put on a small scale, like bad comments, mean comments. Good you can learn from them. Maybe they are teaching you something. Or like you said, you delete it and you move on. No big deal. <laughs> yeah. It's all about perspective, isn't it's it? It's all about perspective. Nobody's, yeah. It, this is a drop in the hat. If you're nervous about putting yourself out there, getting a mean comment. It doesn't matter. It really doesn't. You learn from it or you ignore it and you move on. Yeah. And I really can, can validate that. My, my father, as I said, was in the hospital this year for 77 days, had open heart surgery and some complications. And thankfully he was able to get out. He escaped uh, you know, to live another day. The guy had a yeah. new aortic valve replacement, triple bypass, yeah. Um, and, uh, had some complications, was in there for 77 days, but I'll tell you what, not a damn thing on the internet mattered during that time, my friends. I mean, somebody could have said you are, you know, the worst of the worst, Dave. And I would have been like, is that a mosquito biting me? I mean, I don't know. Is that, I mean, what, that doesn't even matter. Exactly. So how can I take a little bit of that perspective, even if I don't have a crisis or a family member or my, my own health that's in disarray, 
uh, how can I take some of that perspective to realize that, you know, what I'm doing here is developing a skill in an open arena. I'm playing a game in front of people on a field and anything could happen. And this is what real life is. I mean, this is a lot like any other thing you're going to do. Mm-hmm. You, you know, if you play a game of football, you play a game of soccer, you play some uh, game of pool or something, you're going to do that in front of people. And there's a chance you could fall over and bust your ass, trip on something, you know, you know, I mean, anything could happen. You could make a fool out of yourself any way, mm-hmm. in any way, shape or form, any time of the day. And, you know, why not take an opportunity if you are going to make a fool of yourself, at least be learning and developing some skills while you're doing it. And is this really going to be the first time you've ever made a fool of yourself? I think the real secret to it is learning to laugh at yourself. Would you agree? Uh, Oh, a hundred percent. It's not the first time you're going to make a fool. It's not the last time. So you might as well learn and move forward with it. It really, it is, it's the perspective, like you said, just make it a small deal, not a big deal. Yeah. I, I And that was honestly my fear for the a longest time, just in life. I can remember being a teenager and being cool was everything. And then, of course, I took some of that thinking into my 20s. And I did, when I started this, I was 25. I mean, so I still had a little bit of that that cool, you know, I'm too cool for school. I don't want to make a fool out of myself. But I'll tell you what. Eventually, you just realize you're if you're doing anything in life, you're going to embarrass yourself a few times and, um, you know, kind of get over it. And over time, I've I've developed more humility around myself, realizing that I'm I'm kind of a little I'm, I'm a goofball anyways. You, you know, I mean, nobody is that cool. No. Even the coolest people in the world, the coolest thing about them is they're probably pretty, pretty goofy behind the scenes. Mm-hmm. And when we let people know that we're not that cool, actually, that we're kind of goofy dads and messy moms and, yeah. um, you, you know, we're we're just kind of, you know, weird in our own little way or, you, you know, I mean, it, in our bodies change. I mean, my good buddy, Phil Koberger, shouted me out earlier in the show and said, is that some gray you see in the beard, Bubba? <laughs> That's not gray. That's damn near white. I mean, I'm I'm I was just Santa Claus the other day for a particular recovery meeting uh, Christmas party. And I mean, I had the white beard on and it blended right in. I mean, it was I I was I was an amazing Santa. I mean, people did not even know that. It, you know, luckily, I didn't have anybody tugging on the beard like I usually do. What if, if Santa stays in one place for too long, the kids start to ask questions like, oh, that's true. Yeah. Where's your reindeer at? I did get that. I I had a kid who came up and she stuck. Where's your reindeer? I said, they're up on the roof. You know, here I'm lying to a kid. I feel bad about it. But um, my point is, is that the body changes. You know, we, 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 you know, we're not as cool as, as so often we want to try to be cooler than we are, you know? And it's like, What makes you cool is the fact that you're weird and goofy and unique more that we own that on video into other people. Not only the more comfortable do we feel as we're doing this, but the more we give them permission to not have to be perfect as they're listening to us, they can relax a little bit and quite frankly, feel more comfortable. That's where the no like and trust factor comes in. (laughs) And so what have you done to earn people's trust and what are some of the things you're doing sort of behind the scenes that maybe we wouldn't see to connect with your audience? How are you engaging with them, inviting them to DM you? How are you emailing them? What are just some other things that are working well for you to just connect, but also to convert them into leads and sales? Um, I think a big thing that works really well for me and that I found a lot of people appreciate is I just hit that talk button and leave voice messages. Um, For me, with three little kids, I'm leaving voice messages while I'm walking around the house. It's quicker than texting for me. And I think a lot of people are like, you know, I watch the videos, but it's nice to hear your voice, to know that it's a real person behind there. They can hear, you know, one kid's knocking over a block tower. (laughs) You know, the toilet's getting flushed. Like, it's real life. I'm just a real person trying to reach out and and help you in a way that I know is successful and that you can be successful with um, yeah. if you're willing to put the work in. And I think that's part of it is I try to be up front. I'm like, and you, you put it in your verbiage and everything too, is like, this is, this isn't a 
get rich quick scheme, a Ponzi scheme. It's like learn from skills, put them to work, continue to work and learn, and you're going to find success with this. Um, and I think that's what gives me, you know, it feels good to be able to reach out and help people achieve goals that they thought they maybe never could have achieved in their lifetime. And mm. for me, I always wanted to stay home with my kids. I actually, when I got pregnant with my daughter, took a weekend track overnight position so I could be with them during the week, you know, um, so I found a way to make it work in that sense, but never, you know, I'm just so grateful. Never did I think I would be able to stay home with them and, and be able to work in these little moments throughout the day. Um, and I think just connecting with people and finding what their issues are, which is like you said, money and time and figuring out a way to make it work for them, which might not look the same as me, but can, you know, find a way to fit into their lives and, find some of that relief that they're looking for. Yeah. And, and that's the same in any niche you're working in. I mean, you, mm -hmm. everybody's got usually some, a similar pain across the board, you know? Mm -hmm. And so the cool thing is about when you're trying to find your audience and the best thing you can do about to find your audience is figure out what their pain points are yeah. and just, create, talk about your own experience and stories with those pain points. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's, and make funny stories about them, tell funny stories about them, make fun of yourself, make fun of other people in a kind, uh, you know, lighthearted way yeah. and just be yourself around it and not, don't act like a guru. Don't act like you're the all knowing omnipotent one who's got all the answers, but mm -hmm. just say the biggest thing that gets people to trust you is your experience with those same problems, right? That's mm -hmm. the number one thing. And if you talk about your own experience with those problems, again, no matter what the niche is, say you were in the dog training niche and you talk, like for me, if I was in the dog training niche, I would tell stories about, like I had a pit bull, his name was King and um, he passed away uh, in 20, he passed away about a year ago. Um, right, right in my, right in, right in our arms, man. I mean, he, he just needed to be, he just needed to be put down. Right. I mean, his, he was just miserable and, um, uh, was, 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 was dying, had heart issues, hip issues, everything. Wonderful, oh. dog, wonderful dog. It, it, I, I cried like a dog, like a howling dog when, when they came to the house. I mean, man, oh. It was really, really a, a moment. My son was there. My dad was there. He lived with my dad, though, for, for the longest time and became my dad's dog because Aww. he did have some some aggression. You know, mm -hmm. he had a couple of small kids and stuff like that. And so we sent him to my dad's house and said, basically, you've got a new grandson here. And he, yeah, he, yeah. He, and so the other thing that he, the dog did was he went after. So that's a pain point. I mean, you know, imagine your dog nipping at your kids and your your and, uh, and your family members, your nieces, nephews, stuff like that. Here's mm -hmm. another thing the damn dog did was he went after a female male woman one time. Oh, no. Got our got our house banned from being able to um, receive mail up at the house. So we had to install in every every mailbox in our neighborhood had one of those on house mailboxes where they, we had to put a mail, the mailman or mailwoman, they would no longer come in our yard. We were banned for life, oh, for geez. life from ever being able to receive mail on our house. We had to install a, a, we had to install a mailbox down at the road, which was not a big deal, but, um, they, they basically said, if this, if anything happens again, we're not going to even deliver mail to your house. And that's the U S government yeah. basically saying, we're going to black ball your house, your entire yeah. house because the dog went after. So, you know, imagine me telling that pain story to my audience and talking about finding solutions to be able to get your dog to listen to you, to behave, right? Those are my personal stories. Mm -hmm. By telling those stories, I get people to relate, know, like, and trust me because mm -hmm. I'm being vulnerable about my own stuff, about my own story. And I've done the same thing in the online marketing niche, talking about my lack of financial freedom, talk about my lack of time freedom, talking about me swinging a hammer on a hot construction site. Um, and being real about it, you, you know, as you said, recording messages on audio, you know, I, I do the same thing. And, you know, if you ever get an audio message from me, you're bound to hear my three-year-old boy in the background 
you know, saying, hi, poopy butt banana head. You know, <laughs> yeah. I'm dead serious. Yeah. You know, and, yeah. and you're not really in his inner circle until he calls you poopy butt banana head. <laughs> You know, it's not, it's not, it's an endearing term. It's not a, term. yeah. Right. yeah. Right. So, you know, this is, this is what it is. And a lot of times I think we come in thinking that we need to be more professional than we do. And there's right. a difference between being a servant and being, having a servant's heart and having amazing customer service and having high integrity and, and being to me, that's professional, not being mm. stiff and, and uh, corporate to where right. I'm worried about the, the, the things that I say. Surely I want to be conscious of terms that could be offensive or derogatory. Certainly. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. just who I am. And we should all try to be conscious of hurting people. Mm -hmm. But in terms of you know, just being yourself and being real and talking to your audience and customers the same way that you talk to your best friend, that's actually going to behoove you and make people know, like, and trust you more today in 2023 than if you were acting like a corporate stuck up snob, mm -hmm. right? A hundred percent. Yes. I think you want to hear from a real person that's gone through, you know, something that you've gone through as well. And yeah, for me, connecting with people and helping people. And I think that's the nursing background. Like you want to serve. That's kind of what I spent my whole life learning and working in. Um, so to make that transition and be like, yes, I'm here to help in any way that I can, you know, whether it's through any avenue that they choose, like I'm here to offer any type of little bit of expertise that I have. And I say that I'm like, I'm new at this. Like, yeah. so come along, I think, in my journey and, and learn with me. If you want to jump in, come and learn and hop on this journey with me. And I'm happy to share any type of knowledge that I gain from this with you and hope that you have success alongside me, basically. Yeah. Totally. And it's still important to have confidence and give clear calls to action because people, mm -hmm. although they want to, re here's what they want. They want to be told what to do in a loving and compassionate way. A hundred percent. Yes. Right. They, yes. they don't, they don't want all love, compassion, and empathy with a lack of clarity and confidence. Yeah. They want, and that's what I think some of our biggest challenges are is actually giving calls to action, telling people what to do. Go and go get my free download right now. Mm -hmm. Go opt into my, to my, click the link and go opt in and watch the training video. You know, go download my PDF, uh, mm -hmm. DM me for this information. It's going to change your life. And I'm, I promise you. It's the same exact thing that I'm learning with and using, and it's changed my life as well. You can add the compassion and the humanity and the empathy in, but you have to be clear and direct yeah. because if they knew what to do, they wouldn't be listening to you on your Instagram or TikTok profile, right? Absolutely. Yes. And I think that's a piece that is maybe hard. I think for me too, was doing a strong call to action, um, I think that was kind of going out of my comfort zone to be like, this is what click below for the link or comment ready. And I will send this over to you, but it's true. It's like, they're there to learn. So give them um, clear instructions about what to do and then add that value um, when you start that conversation. Yeah. yeah. And that is value to really give them clear mm -hmm. direction, you know, uh, yes. but, but yep. to not act like you're better than them. That's where we get into. And I think this is what people are afraid to do is when you're new, you got that imposter syndrome. You don't want to tell people what to do. You don't want to come off as you know it all. But the truth is, is that, you know, every great leader has to develop confidence before they develop experience in some ways, right? Think about some of the, you know, generals and leaders in war and people who are thrown in. Probably you did it as well. You know, you went from a brand new nurse in school to having your first week and you had to walk into patient's room and, and have a sense of leadership and clarity and not be, you know, not be afraid to tell people what to do and uh, mm -hmm. be clear and confident about it and, and sort of, 
you know, not be arrogant about it, not be demeaning about it, you know, be willing to correct yourself, take feedback, say, I'm not the world's best expert, but you're the patient. I'm the nurse, you know, in the, in the, in our sense, it's like, you're the one who's watching me. You're the student. I'm the teacher right now. Right. I'm teaching you, I'm showing you something. And Mm -hmm. people respond really, really well to that because we're already pre-programmed to be learners. We're already pre-programmed to take direction. Most of us have spent our entire life in school, in employee, in an employee, an employee employee relationship to where we're taking orders in a sense. Mm -hmm. And if you can do it in a compassionate and caring and empathetic way, which is probably not how they're getting it in other areas of their life, particularly their jobs. Um, plus, you're giving them valuable information and telling them what you're saying will help them um, and, and giving them relatable stories and making them feel comfortable that you're not just um, you know, some scammer who's t- talking about things you don't have personal experience with. Mm-hmm. It, it's, it, I, all of you will begin, I think, to see little, little miracles happening, which that miracle just may be somebody responding well to your content and actually yeah. taking your direction, right? Right. Let me ask you, you said you've learned so much about yourself. What's one thing that stands out to you in this last four month journey that you have learned about yourself? <sighs> to let go of any type of perfectionism. Just put yourself out there. Don't worry about it. I think before this, I was somebody, you know, I wrote that school report and I read it four or five times and I edited it and I take the tests and I'd read through every question again. And I had to let go of that. And I think that has been the biggest growth for me is I put it out there as it is um, and just move forward because perfectionism is not the goal. It should never be anybody's goal. You want to keep moving forward. You want to keep striving to do better, but it doesn't have to be perfect. The tech part, your first post, your comments, your, your blog, you know, caption that you write, put it out there as you are and just keep getting better each day that you move forward. Yeah. Yeah. I love that. It reminds me of something my dad has said to me my entire life. And I believe he says he said it to me because he's well, I know that he is also a perfectionist and uh, was one of the reasons why we had a hard time making money in construction. Oh, yeah. He couldn't leave the job. You know, there was always another thing to to make perfect. Right. At a certain point, you got to wrap the job up and move on. But that was also why people always called us back because his integrity was unmatched and he, <laughs> the job was perfect all the time, every time. Right. Um, he would say to me, progress, not perfection, son. He yeah. would say, strive for excellence, not perfection. Absolutely. Strive for excellence, not perfection. And that is starting to make sense to me as I get older. Strive for excellence. You know, excellence is much different than perfection. Excellence mm-hmm. is a state of mind. It's a way of being. It's, it's um, wow, you're really excellent at that versus you're perfect. Excellent. Perfect. Excellence is, uh, there's always um, room for improvement in excellence. The, there's yeah. always going, to, there, the, you know, excellence is, um, is what all great um, high-performing athletes are. They're excellent, but all high-performing athletes have bad games. All mm-hmm. high-performing athletes, gymnasts, ice skaters, um, Olympians, trip, fall, drop, miss, and and they're still excellent. Tiger yeah. Woods, excellence. His son is now showing excellence. Doesn't mean they're perfect. As a matter mm-hmm. of fact, just this last weekend, his son said, we, we crapped at putting. We sucked. Yeah. They're yeah. still excellent. They're excellent golfers. They're just Absolutely. not perfect golfers. And we don't ever describe people as he's perfect, but yet we expect, and we never look up to people by saying, well, wow, they're perfect. We always say, wow, they're excellent. They're yeah. incredible. Mm-hmm. But then we expect that perfection from ourselves. And it's really unfair and unrealistic. I'm glad you hit on that before we wrap up. My friend. Uh. Beautiful, wonderful episode. You did it. You delivered so much value. This has been so fun. And um, you're going to be uh, our our last episode here before we move in to the Christmas holiday. Oh, uh, nice. You know, and because um, because I believe Christmas is Monday, is it not? It is. It's coming quick. Fast. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, it's um, it's just a, a beautiful it's a beautiful time to be thinking about, you know, what it's what your life 
is going to look like here in seven, eight, nine, exactly 10 days on January 1st, right? When we all get a clean slate and we yep. get to like have a brand new year. And the things that you've talked about here are just amazing points and nuggets and platinum bars for us to marinate on this weekend as we move into this holiday weekend. And, um, you know, we're all looking and hoping for an even better year in 2024. And you've given us so many nuggets and really, really powerful thoughts to think about to make that happen. So thank oh, you. Thank my you. Friend, and come back and see me. Okay. I will. Thank you so much for having me. You're so welcome, Emily. We'll talk to you later. Okay. Bye. Bye. All right, my friends, you can follow and find Emily over at Little Time Affiliate over on Instagram. You can, um, you know, follow her content. She's given you so many nuggets, so many behind the scenes thoughts about how she's done what she's done, building an audience of 40,000 people and having some success here in four months of doing this. It's pretty incredible. She should be incredibly proud of herself. And thank you for all of the wonderful comments throughout this episode. So much interaction, so much identification with the things that we talked about. We just love, I love to, um, you know, see so many wonderful comments for our guests who are coming on oftentimes for the very first time going live and certainly nerves are there when they're coming on this show, you know, um, there's no doubt about that because, you know, we're all just, obviously I've been doing this for a long time, but these people are brand new. You guys are all brand new at this. And so this is a, a beautiful opportunity to see people grow right in front of your eyes, you know? And so we really appreciate all the support and kind, um, compassionate validation and affirmations in the comments. And I hope that Emily has a chance to go back and read all these beautiful comments left for her. It was truly a legendary episode and happy holidays. Merry Christmas. All the things, my friends, to all of you based, no matter what your religion or beliefs or what you're celebrating here. Happy Hanukkah, Merry Kwanzaa, Christmas, uh, all the things. We love you all. And there's room for everybody here in this community. Um, this is not about, uh, you know, age, race, sexual identification, creed, religion, lack of religion, any of those kind of things. That, that, that's a saying uh, that I, I got from recovery rooms. But it's really true here. What we're most interested in, and this is also what they say in recovery, is what you want to do about your problem and how we can help. Um, you know, what you want to do about your situation and how we can help to support you and lock arms with you and, um, and help you to have uh, the life in the business and, and uh, the freedom, both time financial that you want and help you to serve your audience even more powerfully. And we try to do that through example here, not only in our courses, but also here on the show. This is our content strategy that we do five days a week here at 10 a.m. Eastern time. And if you want to get a little text message whenever we go live, you can text the letters WUL, stands for Wake Up Legendary, to 813-296-8553. And we'll send you a nice little text message reminder on your phone at 10 a.m. Eastern Time. You can click a link and come right over here onto Facebook. We also post the recordings of each episode up on all the major podcast platforms so you can you know, type in Wake Up Legendary to all the podcast platforms. We try to get the episodes up same day. These episodes also live here on the page, over 850 episodes. We also upload them onto YouTube as well. Just type in David Sharp. You should find uh, that channel. But my friends, this was one worth watching or listening to over the weekend. A lot of nuggets and a lot of powerful points dropped by Emily. Again, you can find her over on Instagram at Little Time Affiliate. And with that being said, have a fantastic Friday, great weekend, a great holiday, my friends. We love you. We appreciate you. Be great, stay legendary, and get out of here. Peace.